College Basketball on the Mountain is brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. By Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. By Red Rock Golf Trail, it'll leave it smart. By the Collegiate Licensing Company, fueling fan passion through licensed products. And by State Farm, proud sponsor of the tournament and proud to offer great rates and great service 24-7. Action anywhere you want it in Las Vegas, Nevada. But the best action around inside the Thomas and Mack Center on the campus of UNLV. Quarterfinal number three about to tip off. And TCU Horned Frog head coach Neil Doherty in his sixth season at 6 and 10 in the Mountain West Conference, equaling the win total of the first two years these Horned Frogs played in this league. Ryan Wall back in the starting lineup. The last four games for TCU, he had 15 points against BYU the last time out in the regular season. Well, it's the same result as we start the tournament here for Vegas, but a totally different crew. Of course, Wink Adams is back running things at the guard spot. Curtis Terry had his first double-double of his career in his senior night game, last regular season game for Lon Kruger, last time out here in Vegas in the big win over Utah. And Lon Kruger, of course, named Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. What a job he has done losing four starters and the defensive player of the year. Let's check in with the third member of our crew now, Blaine Fowler. Hey guys, something to watch for tonight. Both of these teams very good at getting steals. One and two in the conference, TCU one, UNLV two. But they do it with different things in mind. TCU is a little more gamble oriented. They like to go get their hands on the ball. They're specifically trying to get steals. UNLV's pressure is to disrupt the timing of the other team. The result, TCU last in the conference in field goal percentage, UNLV number two behind BYU. Watch for those teams out pressuring this afternoon. All right, thanks a lot, Blaine. Fowler working hard today, coach. He worked the earlier two games, did a great job as the analyst. Had an exciting one last time out. Air Force falling to San Diego State, and we're underway with quarterfinal number three here in Vegas. We'll watch Wink Adams just from the get-go, getting all over Jason Eby. Great ball pressure there. Kevin Langford's had a special season for Neil Doherty and those TCU Horn Frogs. Here's Ryan Wall, the senior, back into the starting lineup. Five to shoot for TCU. Langford does just that and gets the roll. Well, Langford has a chance to have a great game here. He's the biggest guy on the court with uh, uh, Runner Rebels only starting a 6'7 senior. And big Kevin Langford's the truest power forward in the league at 6'8", 245. I'd like to see him get a whole lot of low block catches and not have to create offense like he just did dribbling into the paint. Well, Blaine told you off the top, a tenacious Frogs defense. Snow dagger from the corner. They call him the snow dagger, and Joe Darger has gone cold as of late behind the hump. But that's a good sign for Lon Kruger and company. Well, Joe Darger, the most undersized post player in the league, he's really a small forward masquerading as a post guy, but that's what he can really do, which makes him a tough matchup for opposing post players having to chase him out to the three-point line. Answering other end, Brent Hackett, the senior from right there in Fort Worth. Well, I said the two guys that had to have big games were Hackett and Langford, and they're off to a good start. Langford quickly in Darger's face, and he drives and lays it in. Five points for Joe Darger to start tonight. The Joe Darger, Langford rushing at him at the three-point line to keep him from shooting that three, and Darger just put his head down and drove him right to the basket. Langford comes up short. Wink Adams, first team all Mountain West Conference with the rebound. Terry's first three try, it's way short. Rebound by the other senior, Corey Bailey out of Tampa, Florida. Terry and Bailey coach on senior night combined for 36 points, and here's a senior trying to get in there for a steal for the 12th ranked team in the NCAA when it comes to snagging the ball and knocked out of bounds by the Frogs. Though. There you see Joe Darger Langford, really a hard closeout, expecting him to shoot the three, and Darger simply drove it around him. That's going to be a tough matchup for Langford, where Langford's got to make that work for him as at the other end and take Darger down to the low block and use his 245 to his advantage. Bailey lines one up. Two strong rebound, Kevin Langford. Oh, 
Langford and Hackett, both from Cowtown, right there in Fort Worth. There are five TCU Horn Frogs from the Metroplex of Dallas Fort Worth. Long three try. That was from the strip. Hackett's got two of them. Well, Brett Hackett has been around a long time playing his 122nd game for the Horn Frogs this year. A prolific high school score. He's been bothered with injuries his whole career here, but he can shoot it deep, and he is physically extremely strong for a guard. That was deep, James. That was from back at the hotel, I believe. No, that hotel is way downtown. <laughs> Our hotel is long way out there. <laughs> it's a nice one, but it's way out there. And it's free. That's what I like about it. There you go. Wink Adams off the back of the iron. Another rebound for Langford. UNLV shooting it a little bit too quick, I bet, for uh, Coach Kruger's fancy right now. They're playing with a lot of energy, real excited about this first game. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him pull the reins back a little bit and run a couple sets here to kind of get him into a little bit of a rhythm. Good first step to get by Terry there to help his Rujo on Hackett. Frogs rebound, though, 10 to shoot. Look at Rene Rujo work down low. He comes up with the rebound. Rene Rujo has been spectacular for Long Cougar, Coach. Well, that's nice defense against Langford there. I, I'd rather see Langford catch the ball a lot deeper than what he normally does. Wall goes behind the back and lucky to get that one back off the hands of Baylor. Boy, he was lucky. That, that would have been a bad turnover two on one. Long three try, Ryan. Wall got it. Ryan Wall coming off a great game against uh, uh, BYU in Fort Worth where he had 15 points. Hackett steps inside the hump and right back out, but it rolls out. Ren Hackett two for three behind the three-point line. Curtis Terry hits the deck hard. No whistle, and Wink Adams will slow things down. Wisely, he slows things down. I, I think they need to get a quality shot. I haven't liked their last two, three possessions. Taking quick threes, kind of out of rhythm threes. Wink Adams backs out and says, let's, let's get back in rhythm a little. Well, the Frogs come storming out of the gate, and Ryan Wall, his first points of the night from way downtown. The home team. UNLV running Rebels by six early. Our keys to the game are brought to you by Dodge. Well, TCU are already taking care of both these keys. They got to stay in it early, playing UNLV on their home court. Not only staying in it, they're up 11 to six, and uh, then they've got to hit shots. They've done that. UNLV has lived and died with their pressure defense all season, and they've got to limit TCU's second chance points. TCU coming off an 18 offensive rebound performance against BYU, James, and BYU is one of the best rebounding teams in the league. There's our first look at Alvardo Parker. First meeting with these Rebels. He only went for 20 points and 13 rebounds back on January 30th. UNLV handled TCU easily in both matchups. First game was 70 to 58, and Wink Adams has had one heck of a season in his junior year against these Horned Frogs. Corey Bailey asking for a whistle there, won't get one. Jeff, I've always struggled with Kevin Langford trying to do too much from the perimeter. He's the biggest guy in the court. He needs to get down on the low block and let his teammates get him the ball. He's trying to play like a small forward at 6'8", 245, and in my mind, that's not his game. He needs to get low block catches. Well, as soon as these Rebels cross the timeline, Faces full of purple. That time it was Martis Moronis, the sophomore guard, and son to assistant coach Sean Woods. Yes, that's Sean Woods of University of Kentucky fame. Corey Bailey, the feed a little bit too far in front and can't come up with any points. TCU has a wealth of small guards, and they'll run all of them through and keep them fresh. 16-footer by Hackett, short. And here comes Wink. Right into that sea of purple, Coach Wink Adams blows right by Keon Mitchum. And then the help comes down and a foul. 
on the junior guard. Well, I think UNLV still playing with a lot of nervous energy right now, which is fine on defense where you need a lot of energy. I think they're going way too quick and trying to force the issue way too much offensively right now. That's about the third time Wink has, has driven it, as you call it, into a sea of purple there. And, of course, he finds himself at the free throw line. But uh, uh, now some subs coming in. Look for him to, to back it out and run run a little bit of half-court offense. Matt Shaw into the game, number 34, 6'8", has had a, a terrific year at 6'8", 240, one of the true inside guys on this entire UNLV team. Let's get it over to Blaine real quick. Hey, Joe, to finish on your thought, I listened in on Lon Kruger's last time out. He said exactly what you talked about. He said, hey, guys, I have a question for you. What was that you were running down there? I don't even know what that was. Settle down, pull it out. We've got to move the basketball and don't let our emotion get to us. How about the quick step by Keon Mitchum? He's fouled as he heads to the lane. The only difference in what I said and what Long Kruger said is he's the coach of the year and nominated for the uh, Henry I, the national coach of the year. And uh, I'm working with you, Jim, which I love. <laughs> and we got Blaine tonight. And we Sharon got Blaine, Blaine too. The three Musketeers here. So the sophomore out of Rochester, New York, misses his first of two. Keon Mitchum. Had a season high, 10 points in his only start this year against the Air Force Falcons. And he gets his first point here. Mitchum and Moronis, two of those little guards I talked about, they have five of them all together on this team. And, and Neil Doherty plays all of them at one time or another, and they, they really get after you. Another one of my favorite players is in the game now, number five, Neiman Owens. He started as a sophomore and a junior. Uh, when Henry Salter was starting this year, had to sit down. But what a what a handy, experienced guy to have off the bench. After Matty Shaw picks up his first foul, the big steal and jamming it home, Rene Rougeau. Rene Rougeau leads the Mountain West Conference in steals. He has great anticipation and great quickness, along with long arms, which is a lethal combination for steel. Moronis left all alone, takes advantage of it. Big three, Martis. Adams for three. Eric Curry lets the crowd know. It was just a high dribble. He, he didn't carry it. I didn't get his hand under the ball. I thought that was a good call. He did get it up in the air. Kind of. Langford thought about it. The long arms of Rene Rougeau right in front of him, and he walks with it. What's just great anticipation by Rene Rougeau on this sideline out of bounds play. Boy, that's what coaches call shooting the gap, getting the steal, going down and getting the easy slam dunk at the other again. Once again, Kevin Langford trying to do too much on offense, trying to play like a small forward and create shots. He needs to slow down and get back down in his house in the paint. Kendall Wallace with the ball into the ball game. There's Rougeau back to Wallace. Right down the middle of Main Street, USA. Nobody there for him. Alvaro Parker comes from the weak side to try to get the block. Alvaro Parker really quick off his feet. That was a tough shot by Wallace. Kind of a runner laid it high off the glass. Terry almost had another steal for the Rebs here. Curtis Terry scoreless here with under 13 to play. Hackett's got two threes, make it three. Three for four behind the three-point line for the senior. Red Hackett, not one of those guys that blows by with his quickness, but he can nudge you with that strong body and create space to shoot his jump shot from, which is, is exactly what he did. Good save, Wink Adams. Hey, TCU really has the Rebels back on their heels. Usually it's the Rebels who speed their opposition up offensively. TCU doing just that to the Rebels, making them play really fast at half court. For a big man, six foot eight, Matt Shaw can hit from downtown, and he shows us right there. First points of the night for Matty Shaw, and his second foul quickly after. Well, Matt Shaw, for a big, strong kid, really can shoot it. 
from the three-point line, but uh, that second foul may take him out of the game. Look at this dish by Terry here, actually throwing back, looking over his shoulder. Uh, he's had 11 assists in one game this year. He leads the league in assists. I started the year out, James, saying Curtis Terry was not a pure point guard. I don't think that is his natural position, but boy, he has evolved into an outstanding point guard this year. That was a terrific pass back to Matt Shaw at the three-point line. A great sense of where everyone's at on the court. Parker tries the backdoor feed to Jason Eby, but he can't squeak by Kendall Wallace. A four-point lead for the Horned Frogs. 11.42 remaining in the first half. Fred Hackett, the senior, playing his 122nd game for the Horned Frogs tonight. Three for four from the three-point line. Watch him jab fake here, get his guy off balance. Boy, a quick release, great footwork here, a catch and shot two or three, and that's where he bumps off with that great upper body strength, creates a space for his step back three, three for four from the line, and off to an outstanding start. Brent Hackett, three for four, the Horn Frogs as a team, five for six is Ryan Wall and Martis Moronis getting involved. Of those 18 points, only one bucket was inside the three-point line. That one off the hands of Kevin Langford. So nine to shoot for TCU. There's Hackett in traffic. Shot clock now at four. Again way downtown off the iron. Ryan Wall took one shot earlier this season against New Mexico. It was with 1.5 seconds left in the game, coach, and it was the game winner. What a huge win in Cowtown for TCU and Neil Doherty over Steve Alford's New Mexico Lobos. Ryan Wall, that was against his old team, played two years at the University of New Mexico and transferred from TCU. I'm sure he got great satisfaction out of beating his old team. Kendall Wallace. Rebound number three on the night for Kevin Langford. I don't think Wallace was ready to shoot that. You know, you can take a, a bad shot in the gym by yourself if you're not set and ready to, to shoot. I thought Wallace kind of shot that, found himself open by surprise, and just cast it up there. Didn't get his footwork done early and get ready to shoot it. Langford works on Darger. And even though Langford missed that, that's where I'd like to see him get the ball more, right around the basket where he can use his body and not have to create shots off the dribble. Quick first step, Rene Rougeau. That was size differential there. Rene Rougeau at 6'6", up over Ryan Wall at about 6'1". Rene Rougeau pretty handy, about 15 feet on end. Not a prolific three-point shooter, but really quick to the basket and a good mid-range shooter. Bailey quickly finds Hackett, but a little too late. Doing some work down there and inside with two more points. Already has the three threes and saves that one from going out of bounds. Wall for three. Ryan Wall's feeling it. Well, they are just playing offensively. Loose and goose. Uh, loose as a goose with no conscious right now. Just firing it up from everywhere. Hackett a great move to the basket. Ryan Wall. Shot that like he was in the gym by himself. Watch Hackett's move through the basket here, James, with that great upper body strength here. Fought off really two defenders there and a great completion, great concentration on the basket, played through the hit there. Hackett, a wealth of experience, 122 games tonight. He has scored over 1,000 points in his career. He's had a really a nice... Nice career for uh, the Horn Frogs. The highest profile recruit when Neil Doherty first got the job at TCU. Again, bothered by injuries his entire career, but still had a very, very solid career there. Joe Darger, a junior from Riverton, Utah, hits his first. Also from the Beehive State, third member of our crew, Blaine Fowler. Blaine, what's going on?
talking about Brent Hackett, you guys, and he's the leading scorer here tonight. Joe, you mentioned his high school career. One night in a high school game, he scored 73. And then uh, the next night, he goes out and puts up 52 back-to-back -back nights in a high school game. And when he came to TCU, you mentioned Joy's shoulder problems. He had his right shoulder surgically repaired after his freshman year. The left shoulder surgically repaired a year later, and he's never really been able to regain that shooting form. And then they played him at the one for a couple of years. He's just finally feeling home this last two years at that shooting guard. But, but too bad for those injuries because he was an unbelievable scorer. 73 and 56 on back-to-back -back nights. I, I'd say that qualifies as prolific scoring. That's the way Fowler used to do it in upstate New York. Ball last touched by the Rebels. Belongs to TCU. Langford to inbound. Langford just turned it over down at the other end. Carried it. Fifth turnover of the night for TCU. I had 73 and 56 on back-to-back -back days. Unfortunately, that was my math exam grade. <laughs> not, not how many points I scored. Well, that's the teacher's fault for giving you back-to-back -back tests. Certainly. The first foul of the night on Corey Bailey coming at you at halftime. We're going to take it upstairs to Marius and company. We'll have all the stats and highlights and a look back at a great day here at the Mountain West Conference Tournament. All brought to you by the good folks at State Farm. James, I really think the first day of this tournament when both CSU's men and women's team won at 0-16 has given every underdog, certainly in this tournament, maybe across the country, confidence. If TCU playing lights out right now with a lot of confidence and really bringing it to the running Rebels on their home court. There's another steal, and Neiman Owens fouls Curtis Terry before he can take it to the rack. First foul of the night. Great, for great, Neiman. great ball pressure here. Excuse me, James. Curtis Terry, great anticipation. You see UNLV, once that ball's picked out, just locks in and denies every pass, every guy one pass away, which makes it very important not to pick up your dribble without a place to throw it to. Mike Scott, the freshman out of Philly, who started a handful this season on Corey Bailey for TCU. Scott, a, a teammate in prep school back in Philly with Stephon Jackson, one of the better players in the country. Now plays at UTEP. The senior, Curtis Terry, first points of the night in style, a big three. Well, some way, big Luke Tauscher got matched up on Terry. Terry just kind of rhythmed him inside the three-point line and jumped up and, and dinged him for a three-pointer. Block shot, Terry, TCU regains possession. And Mitchell drills a three. The great equalizer of the three-point line turns every underdog into a contender if you're shooting it well from three, which TCU is lighting it up from three. TCU's rotated a lot of bodies this season. They've got Luke Tauscher in there right now. 13 to shoot for UNLV. Rougeau steps inside the hump and drills it. That is exactly Rene Rougeau's uh, uh, distance and his range. Right there, right inside the three-point line. Wink Adams took it away from his ball screen, got his man to help a little bit, and threw it back to him. And Rougeau, Rougeau delivers the Another foul coming up here down in the paint. And Curtis Terry, his big brother, is the Jet, Jason Terry. And he's hitting it from way downtown, NBA style, here in the Mountain West Conference Tournament tonight. Just over seven left to play in the first half here in Las Vegas. And the visitors from Cowtown with a three-point lead. This copyrighted telecast of the Mountain West Conference is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience and any retransmission, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other user dissemination of this telecast or the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Mountain West Conference is prohibited. So Brent Hackett, after a well-deserved rest, back into the ball game for TCU. Hackett already with 11 points. He had a big night a year ago in the play-in game. TCU 
beating up on the New Mexico Lobos to advance to the quarterfinals. It was their first win in a Mountain West Conference tournament game, just the third season in the league for TCU. We'll have New Mexico and the Utah Utes in our nightcap tonight. That should be a great one, but first things first, the running Rebels, the two seed and the seven seed TCU Horn Frogs. There's Terry. James, if you're Lon Kruger in that last time out, you're telling your team, hey, we're doing pretty good on offense, shooting 50%, but guess what, guys? They're shooting 56%. You've got to tighten the screws up on defense a little bit. TCU, seven for nine from the three-point line right now. Shot of the Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year and the finalist for the Henry Iba National Coach of the Year. Speaking of national awards, the official under the basket, Scott Thornley, was just awarded the James Naismith Outstanding Official of the Year Award, which is quite an honor in itself. Scott, uh, a nationally recognized uh, official, has had several final games, several final fours from Pocatello, Idaho. What a, what a great honor for him. Wink goes one of two, and you don't see that very often. The number one free throw shooter in the Mountain West Conference in the first meeting between these two teams, Coach. Not one team, not one player missed a free throw. UNLV went seven for seven. TCU 15 for 15. And here's a foul called on TCU. I was just getting ready to comment on Wink Adams' defense. As good as he is on offense, one of the top scorers, great free throw shooter, he is a terrific on-the-ball defender. There you saw him pick Jason Eby up, or actually Mike Scott, just turn him inside out. Scott couldn't shake him uh, and gets a five-second call, which is just like getting a steal, but much harder. Boy, that was terrific on-the-ball defense. There's Terry, another three try, and another banger. Six points. A breakdown by TCU with their defense. They've been switching some. That time they got confused whether they were going to switch that or stay with their man. And Jason Terry wound up wide open. A, a real mental breakdown by the Horn Frog. Running Rebel fans on their feet, cheering on the first lead since it was 3 to 2 UNLV. Langford in trouble, and he finds Hackett. And Bailey gets a piece of Alvardo Parker. Here, James, you see this little cross, a screen on the ball there. TCU, are we going to switch it? Are we going to stay with her man? And Hackett actually comes from the weak side to get a hand up and contest it. But, uh, again, a real breakdown by the TCU defense there. Matt Shaw back in the game with two fouls. Picked up two quick back-to-back -back fouls earlier after he drilled a big shot from long range. There's Rougeau working on Langford, and Adams comes down to help after the pick, and he's called for the foul. Well, not, not a great foul by Wink Adams here. Kind of got over anxious, gets his hand in there trying to steal it from, from Langford. All he had to do was stay in front of him. Uh, UNLV, because they're small around the perimeter, they are able to switch a lot of things. And uh, Wink made a nice switch there, but just needed to keep his hands out. How about Brent Hackett? He carries a full clip, too, you know, Coach. He's going to keep oh, on firing all night long. You ain't lying. Speaking of clips, he's hotter than a cheap pistol right now. Just lighten it up from the three-point line. 14 points for the senior. Here's another senior at the other end. The runner won't go, but the junior follows. Rougeau pumps it in. Even though Curtis misses at the other end, he causes a help situation, James, which allows Rougeau to go to the glass without anybody putting a body on him. So, again, dribble penetration 
uh, actually caused this putback. Watch, you, you see Curtis bring a couple guys with him. They have to come from the weak side, which allows Rougeau great job of going to the glass there. No TCU body there to, to stay between him and the basket. Matt Shaw just picked up foul number three. And Alvardo Parker, just a 41% free throw shooter, hits the front end from the line. And Shaw takes another seat. 434 remaining. TCU back on top by one. Offensive board, Mitchum for three. Offensive rebound again, Langford too strong, the putback won't go. Great rebounding work there by Langford. Parker coming in there. TCU had 18 offensive rebounds in their last game against BYU. They lead the league in offensive rebounds, and there you see why. Great effort by Langford there. Mo Rutledge into the ball game, and Rougeau again. Okay, the key to being a great offensive rebounder is you've got to go every time. If you go enough, then something good happens, just like it has by Rene Rougeau. But you got to keep going, keep going, keep going, and you end up doing something hard and getting something easy like Rougeau. Two straight putbacks. Evie's runner won't go. Another rebound by Rene Rougeau. Here comes Wink Adams to Darger. Too strong on the three offensive board goes to Curtis Terry. Mo Rutledge from downtown rattles out. Well, the crowd was waiting to erupt if one of those would have gone in. UNLV back up by one, and that would have that would have got the crowd really going. Mitchum baseline right through Rujo offensive foul going the other way. Back and forth we go. Ron Kruger's UNLV running Rebels up by one with just over three remaining in the first. the Thomas and Mack Center. Welcome back, everybody. Blaine Fowler, Joe Cravens, and James Bates. The entire Mountain crew here in quarterfinal number three. Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year, Lon Kruger. Partial to purple. K-State player won two Big 8 titles back at Kansas State with the Wildcats, but not tonight, Coach. TCU Horned Frogs all over his running Rebels early. Well, he was a great player at K-State, too. The, the Big 8 Player of the Year, two different years. Uh, so, yeah, he is partial to purple. TCU doing a great job of bringing energy and a lot of enthusiasm tonight. Really have hurt themselves with nine turnovers so far this first half, though, Jamie. Here's a foul called on Neiman Owens. Coach, I don't speak French, but I'm guessing that Rougeau is a verb because this guy is so full of action, his name <laughs> needs to be a verb. Well, I, I was not an English major, so I'll, I'll leave that for Brain Fowler to dissimilate uh, for us. Rougeau is having a heck of a half, though, right now. A lot of energy in this game. Both teams playing very hard. Wink Adams, first league, first team all league guy, 0 for 4, though, right now from the field, James, with only three points. Rene Rougeau, honorable mention all conference, is playing like. Player of the year tonight. J.R. Giddens coming up, co-player of the year. Going by Lee Kamard, who's BYU Cougars won one earlier today. Ryan Wall again. We see TCU switch that ball screen. Rene Rougeau, athletic enough, he can switch on the guards, but he took himself out of play by the, trying that old school ground trick of reaching behind and knocked it away from Wall. Wall just simply stuck it in. There's Wink Adams starting to heat up a little bit now, James. Wink with six, Ryan Wall's three was his third. He's perfect three for three. Luke Kausher, tallest man on the floor tonight at 6'11". And again, way downtown, Ryan Wall. This one won't go. First miss behind the hump for Wall. 
Now, speaking of bigs, back in Coppell, Texas, Ryan Wall was teammates with Stuart Creason, the Colorado State Ram, the senior whose career, unfortunately, is over. He came to town with a boot on his leg and never saw any action in this tournament. Here's this play I was talking about. Watch Tausch just set that ball screen. Rajo in good shape until he reaches behind like that and takes himself out of the play. And Ryan Wall, as you talked about, a teammate of Stuart Creason, Ryan Wall's dad, a very long time and successful high school coach in the Dallas Fort Worth area, Jim Wall. Ryan had a brother who was a quarterback at Oklahoma, but I've known Ryan's father, Jim Wall, for a long, long time. Recruited a lot of his players back at Haskell High School in Fort Worth. Rougeau hits the second there. He's a perfect five for five from the floor. Rene now with a dozen points and half a dozen rebounds. Rebels on top by three as we go under two minutes left in the first half. TCU needs a good shot here so the crowd doesn't, doesn't get, get really into the game and UNLV doesn't start creating a little distance score-wise. A.B. Badger there by Kendall Wallace calls a timeout with 1.46 remaining. Well, coming at you at the half, we're going to take you upstairs. The stats and highlights of this one. Look back on the day that was and still a lot of ball to be played. That's coming at you at the half. Brought to you by State Farm Insurance. James, let's look at Rougeau this first half. Some of the things he's done for his UNLV Rebels. The league leader in steals. You see him create... Two points for self stealing it there. Right in his range, going to his left to pull up from almost the same spot. Again, his range right inside the three. An offensive rebound, followed very quickly by a second offensive rebound after that. Ten points, just having an outstanding night. Not only the leading score, but the leading rebounder in the game. Well, Rene Rougeau. <laughs> Filling some big shoes when you step into the Thomas and Mack Center. That's LJ, Larry Johnson, All-American here, 90-91. He led UNLV, of course, the two NCAA championship games and the national championship in 1990. LJ, the number one pick in the 91 draft. Shot clock expires. Evie just gets it off and hits it. First points of the day for Jason Evie, the sophomore from H-Town. Well, when it's going good, it's going good. Hackett unaware of the shot clock going down, or he would have pulled the trigger on that. And Jason Evie just beat the shot clock to tie the score here. I said they needed a good possession. I didn't quite expect it to go down that way. Assist leader in the Mountain West Conference to the little big man. Another Houston, Texas product. And one, Wink will head to the line and try to make it a three-point play. Here's Jason Abey's three here. Great clock management, so to speak. Here, I think Hackett was unaware. Double zeros on the shot clock when it gets into the air. Wink Adams, as I've said, stronger than two rolls of onions, James. Look at him take on the biggest guy on the court there, Kevin Langford at 245, and just blow him off and make that one go down. Wink Adams, I don't know if he ever played football, but boy, he's got a football body. People say that about me all the time, too. Have you heard him say that? Yeah, but Wink's a point guard in a football body. You're a pulling guard. <laughs> that kind of body. Wallace for three. Too strong. Rebound, Ryan Wall, under a minute to play. In the first half, here in the Thomas and Mack Center, there's Moronis who joined into the three-point barrage here in the first half. Another turnover. Rebels have numbers. Adams lays it in for two. Great defensive pressure speeds you up, and that's exactly what's happened to Moronis right now. Watch this turnover by Moronis. Again, the speed. Boy, just like a group of piranhas there. He was trying to use a ball screen there. UNLV's pressure wouldn't allow him to get to the level of the ball screen and jumps up a little bit out of control. And great off-the-ball defense by UNLV 
like a couple center fielders or free safeties over there. Gosh, they were drawing straws to see who's going to intercept that one to go down at the other end. Good strong move down at this end by John Ortiz to get to the free throw line. Ortiz connects. John Ortiz, a junior. Transfer from Colby Community College, six foot eight, 225 pounder. And hits them both. This next possession is big for both teams going into the locker room. This is a huge momentum possession. If UNLV scores, they go to the locker room feeling good. If TCU can hold them and they not score, TCU goes in down two and feels really good about things. TCU just needs to be solid. They don't need a steal here. Just stay in front of your man and block out, not let him get a second shot. Good call by Lon Krug there. He had a 30-second timeout left, which he was going to lose uh, if he didn't use it there. Now going to get his team into a set. Uh, Lon Kruger is the reason he's the Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. He sensed that this is a big momentum possession as well. James, let's watch if they take it from the sideline out, see if they don't run a play where the guy who takes it out comes back to the ball off some, some kind of double staggered screen for a shot. Well, we mentioned Lon Kruger's playing days at K-State. He also took Kansas State to an NCAA tournament for four straight years. Only coach to do that in the history of the Kansas State University basketball program. Did an amazing job at the University of Florida. When he took over, coach, the Gators were under NCAA and FBI investigation. He only won 100 plus games and took them to a Final Four in 1994 with the Fighting Illini. Four seasons there, three times the NCAA tournament. And then, of course, you mentioned earlier the Sweet 16 run for these UNLV running Rebels last year. Coming in at 12-4, and four, a two-seed in the Mountain West Conference. What? The two-seed has won more championships in this tournament than any other slot. Shot clock is off. Wink Adams and company will hold for the final shot of the half. Darger from the corner the glass, and here comes Moronis. And Ryan Wall didn't let that one go. So we'll head to the locker room, and Lon Kruger's running Rebels sitting on a two-point lead. Here in our third quarter final of the day, we've had two great ones earlier today, and another half, and a game to go. Here's Blaine Fowler with Coach. Lana, an incredible first half. It's tournament time. Everybody's playing well. 10 of 14 for TCU from three in that first half. What do you do to change that? Well, they're, they're shooting well, and uh, we got to get up there and try to, to make it a little bit more of a tough shot. Uh, but they're good. They got a little roll going. We got to work to take some of that away. And Rene Rougeau seems to just keep playing big down the stretch here. Another big first half, 12 points and six rebounds. Rene's done a good job for us. He's just uh, refreshing with his attitude every day. He loves to play and loves to compete. And we need another good half out of him. What do you need to do the second half? We've got to guard him a little better. You know, when they shoot the ball like that, uh, give them some credit, but also we've got to work a little harder. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, Tom. All right, thank you, Blaine. Rougeau big for the Rebels. Hackett with 14 for the Frogs. They trail by two. Let's get it upstairs now for our State Farm Halftime Show. Live from Vegas, coming at you now. The Mountain College Basketball is brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. By Furniture Warehouse on Road Redwood, where nobody beats our prices, absolutely nobody guaranteed. And by State Farm, proud sponsor of the tournament and proud to offer great rates and great service 24-7. Oh, big, beautiful smiles on the inside of the Thomas and Mack Center. UNLV running Rebel cheerleaders and a beautiful night outside here in Las Vegas. Great first half of play. Welcome back, everybody. James Bates, Joe Cravens. Looks good outside right now. I thought it wasn't supposed to rain in Vegas. 15 threes in that first half. Coach, coming from everywhere. Raining threes. 10 three-point shots made by the Horned Frogs, keeping themselves in the game. Uh, UNLV with five. Joe Darger gets them started early in the game. Here's Hackett, who himself is four for five from the three-point line. Wink Adams gets into the act. 
Morales with the left-handed three. Just coming from all over the court, James. What an exciting first half. 40 to 38, TCU feeling pretty good about things. And if you're Lon Kruger and his running Rebels, they're thinking, Sur surely they can't go 10 for 14 again. TCU, check, check on the key. Staying in early, did a great job. Be efficient on offense. Shooting it from the field, 10 for 14 from the three-point line. That's the reason they're still in it. Uh, UNLV's keys, check, check. Pressure defense, they forced 10 turnovers. Limit second chance points, only set, uh, four second chance points by the Horn Frog. And that's the reason we've got a great game, a two-point differential right here. And uh, again, TCU trying to take a script out of that uh, Colorado State Ram upset on the first day, both men and women, and giving the uh, Rebels all they want. Revisiting those keys to the game brought to you by Dodge. Let's check back in with Lane Fowler before we get going in the second half. Guys, the discussion in TCU's locker room was about defensively, he wants them to play better. They want to go under the screens, and Joe can explain that. They want to hedge better and go underneath the screen and do a better job of being consistent with that. And then offensively, he said, let's not just stand around and shoot three-point shots. I want you to move better without the ball, cut without the ball, and let's make some catches and get some easier buckets. So that was the discussion in the TCU locker room. Guys, back over to you. Thank you, Blaine. Backdoor Terry. The other senior finds him. Corey Bailey then. Curtis Terry. That's eight points now on the night. Well, bad Terry. decision by Jason Eby on how to defend that. Went over the top of those screens instead of with the body there. Curtis Terry faded that or just kind of stopped next to the basket for an easy Easy uh, two point. Four point lead matches the largest lead of the game for UNLV, which they held with just under a minute to play in the first half. Here's Jason Eby. Fade away. Last touch, though, by Corey Bailey. He hit the rim, so it'll be a fresh shot clock for TCU. James, here's this set play. Watch Jason Eby here as he defends Jason. Uh, Curtis Terry coming off of this double ball screen on the court. Here you see the route that he took instead of going along the baseline there, and which allowed Curtis Terry to fade that to an easy two. Ryan Wall went three for four from three-point range in the first half, and that young man went four for five, Brent Hackett. Here's Langford working on Rujo. Way short for the transfer from Cal. I like where Langford caught the ball then. I didn't like his shot, kind of falling away with a hook shot at 245. Boy, I'd like to see him really go at the basket and put, put the wood on the defender there and uh, make and play through the hit, just like Wink Adams did. Same move for Wink Adams against Ryan Wall, instead of fading away, leaned in and used his strength to gain advantage. Adams took a while to get going in the first half, but went into the locker room with 10. He's got a dozen now, and hard to the deck goes Hackett. Well, I've said this many times about Hackett, not a blow by a guy that outquicks you to the basket. And a lot of that having to do with those knee surgeries and shoulder surgeries he's had to endure, but extremely strong, able to take the hit and, and continue the play. And a nice job there of playing through the hit and getting himself to the free throw line. Ren Hackett hits him both 16 points now. That foul was on Rujo, his second. Matt Shaw with three on the bench for UNLV. And here Ortiz picks up a foul as he works on Rene Rujo. First one called tonight on John Ortiz. This first five minutes are, are, are big for TCU. They've got to stay in the game and not let, let uh, UNLV kind of cushion that lead a little bit and get the crowd into it. They need to keep this a competitive game. Curtis Terry, another three ball. 
Curtis Terry, the tallest point guard in the Mountain West Conference, able to get his shot off in the crowd. That was a decent look, but his 6'5 frame made it a great look. Last touch by a white jersey, so it'll stay right here. Shot didn't hit the rim. Way off balance was Brent Hackett, so 19 seconds remain on the shot clock. Here early on in the second half, a quarterfinal number three. Look out, Ruja! Another steal, Rene! Throws it down! And here's that crowd I was just talking about as TCU turns it over to a basket at the other end. UNLV getting ready to explode. A great timeout by Neil Doherty to take the crowd out of it and get his team back under control. Crowd into this one right now, though. A nine-point lead, the biggest of the game for the running Rebels. Perfect from the floor. Six for six, 14 points for Rene Rougeau. Here's a look at your regular season steals leader in the Mountain West Conference, Rene Rougeau, the junior for the running Rebels. He's got three in this game. Number three was pretty, Coach. That's his second pick off to an easy dunk at the other end. You don't lead the league in steals for no reason. Great anticipation, great quickness to the ball, and always alert away from the ball. If you watch Rene Rougeau, look at him right there in stance. Always alert. The two keys to off the ball defense, stance and vision, Rene Rougeau is a great example of both. Curtis Terry, no stranger to stitches this season, took a shot to the face, bounces right back up. Look at Hackett. Had the ball tucked away like a fullback, pulled it out and still tries to get the shot off, but he's fouled. Back over to Blaine Fowler. Guys, you know, a lot of people wonder when a team's on a run, a coach calls a timeout, you know, what, what goes on? So I kind of peeked in on Neil Doherty's huddle that time very calmly sat him down and said hey we're all right guys and then sat down and started to draw their offensive sets and said listen this is what they're doing if they overplay it i want you to back cut i want to screen here drew the offense no panic in neil doherty's voice no hollering or screaming simply called the timeout to have them gather themselves and take a breath back to you guys thank you blaine neil doherty spent seven seasons as an assistant under coach roy williams was an assistant under Eddie Fogler at Vanderbilt and South Carolina, and of course he played for Coach K at Army. I don't know if Coach K and Calm go hand in hand, do they? <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so. I tell you, my respect, which is already high for Neil Doherty, really grew about two or three weeks ago when he sent Henry Salter down, set him down, and said, you can't come back until your attitude improves. They probably would have had a winning year, maybe finished a little higher in the league. Their leading scorer, second leading rebounder, Henry Salter, but the wrong team attitude, and Neil Doherty man enough to set him down and say, we're just not going to have that. Garger again off, hustling is Bailey, but ball goes out of bounds. Back to Salter, coach. When he did sit him down, he was shooting 47.7 behind the three-point line. That was only fifth in the nation. The transfer from Gulf Coast College, the Juco All-American, Henry Salter. Oh, he was a candidate for newcomer of the year in the league. I don't know if he would have got it over Marcus Walker, but great courage by Neil Doherty to do that and great conviction. Langford's first bucket of the second half from the elbow. TCU back within five. TCU just not going away. That was a great timeout by Neil Dory for his guys to regroup. They cut a nine-point lead, now back down to five. Corey Bailey still looking for his first points of the ball game. The senior gets his own rebound, and he's fouled. Corey Bailey has yet to score, but coming off a really good game against Utah in their last home game where he had 14 points and five rebounds and a very electrifying dunk late in the game that kind of sealed the victory. Matty Shaw back in and back into the bucket. Another big three for Matt Shaw. Boy, that's what he does best. It's amazing for as big and strong as, as he is, you'd think he would kind of wander around that low block. He wanders around the three-point line, an outstanding catch-and-shoot guy with great footwork and a really quick and high release. Matt Shaw was three for three 
against Utah. Here's a foul. This one on Corey Bailey as Langford comes across the lane. But coach, Matt Shaw three for three against the running Utes of Utah. And to start tournament play, a perfect two for two. His Rebels on top of the frog. Number two seed on top of the number seven seed here in Las Vegas, UNLV. Up 52 to 44 in this one. What do you say? Take a peek around the rest of the scores in the Mountain West Conference. All of them, of course, happening right here. Courtesy of Big O Tires, they started off with BYU having some trouble in the first half against the surprise Colorado State Rams, but then ran away from them. And what a battle it was in the 5-4 matchup. San Diego State coming out alive with a four-point win. And you really hate to see Tim Anderson go home. He's been so much fun to watch in his career. We got a chance to see him on senior day, coach. And in that senior day against that same San Diego State team in Clune Arena, they announced the cheerleaders that were seniors that were leading, the pom-pom girls, and where they were off to. And I don't know that I've been so amazed, <laughs> and I don't care what, what we've seen all year long. We've seen some great things on the floor. What they were, the, the mechanical engineering and, and the aer uh, aeronautical engineering, and on and on and on, every one of those was just amazing. Debbie Sue Smith from Houston, off to flight school. Uh, <laughs> you know, Betty Sue, so-and-so from Mississippi, an intelligence officer. No, it was a very, very impressive introduction of uh, pom-pom girls. Good hustle here by Brent Hackett. What's this out-of-bounds play, James? It's amazing. This late in the year, virtually no one scores on out-of-bounds plays. Everyone just gets it in. Everyone is so well scouted by this time of year. Out-of-bounds plays almost are, are worthless. You just try to get the ball in. A great move by Langford there. That's what I like to see with him. Big, strong body, getting into the paint. Go off the of two feet and be strong with it. Don't fade away. No jump hooks going away from your body. How about the feet? Big match. Shaw to Wink Adams laying it in for two. Great back up by Wink Adams. Really spaced out the TCU defense. How about Langford on a catch and sh shot from three? Only, I think, a 21% three-point shooter this year and shoots it up there just like he does it every day. You're right. 21 jump street letting them have it. Speaking of moving on, Kevin Langford's already graduated back in December. Degree in sociology, a minor in criminal justice. Wink Adams for three short. Here comes Evie. Three on three for TCU. Wall left alone. Bam! Tied at 54. I talked about that great equalizer. Always a part of a great upset is shooting the ball in from the three-point line. And right now, TCU using that great equalizer to tie the score. Matt Shaw banged hard. Shot won't go, but Shaw will head to the stripe and shoot two. That's Alvardo Parker's third foul of the night. You know, Alvaro Parker, an interesting story that the senior only played four years of organized ball. Spent a, the last couple years at Frank Phillips Junior College. He may be the quickest two foot jumper in the league, just off of uh, standing on two feet, uh, going up once, twice, always won the league's leaders in block shots where he can really explode and explode consecutive times. And all of that with some of the worst knees in the Mountain West yeah. Conference. He, he has really had some knee problems throughout his basketball career. Lead back to two for the running Rebels. Langford hustling. Saves it fresh shot clock for Moronis in the frost. That's about the second big-time hustle play Langford's made on the glass, chasing balls down to keep them alive, give his team another possession. Good rebound there, Curtis Terry. Kendall Wallace from the corner. Seventh rebound of the night for Langford. There's Moronis. And Martise Moronis will head to the line. 
Ronis is really quick to the basket. Every once in a while, he gets a little bit out of control there. What I liked there was he went off at two feet. Usually, if you go off two feet, you've got your balance about you. Have a lot better chance to finish the shot. It's a guy a long layup going off one feet, one foot that a lot of times get out of control. First and two for Moronis. First foul of the night called there on Curtis Terry. There's his dad, Sean Woods, in the Hall of Fame at the University of Kentucky, was one in one of the great college games of all time, Kentucky and Duke. Rougeau's foot across. The ball didn't come across the timeline. Won't matter, though, because Moronis with the steal. There's Langford, steps inside the free throw line and lets it go. Own rebound again, put down. We'll head to the strike for a three-point play opportunity. This is as hard as I've ever seen Kevin Langford work on the glass tonight. First, second, third effort, watch this. He goes up, keeps the ball alive, goes up with two hands. The key to getting rebounds in the crowd is you've got to go after him with two hands. And that with that big body there, he creates space around him to rebound from. Just a fabulous effort by Kevin Langford. TCU back up by three. And Ortiz getting involved, a little pickpocket action, knocking that ball out of bounds. 29 to shoot for UNLV and Curtis Terry, who will inbound. Ortiz bouncing around, playing with a lot of energy. TCU, the longer they're, they're in it, and even with the lead, the more confidence they're playing with. which is off on Mitchell. There's Morales with 20 on the shot clock for TCU. Ortiz hits it. How about the big man's touch? Six foot eight. Okay, Ortiz is feeling, well, watch him bouncing around there, very animated, bringing a lot of energy. Good timing for that, that time out there by Lon Kruger. His team's back on their heels a little bit. Watch Ortiz here. Kind of looking around for someone to pass it to. Gets himself under control. Nice pass by Langford there. 6'8", 245. Getting an assist off of a drawn kick. TCU again trying to steal a page out of that Colorado State upset. Magic that they brought yesterday, both the men and the women, 0 and 16, both of them pulling off upsets right now. As I said, that's given everyone in this tournament, maybe nationwide, that anything can happen this time of year. Absolutely, UNLV is 7 and 0 in quarterfinals action in the Mountain West Conference tournament. They're 10 and 1 all time against TCU, but nobody told that to the Horn Frog, John Ortiz. And the guys in purple, a 17-4 run and a five-point lead. And what Neil Doherty's done, it has, he has played a lot of guys, already 10 guys going way deep into his bench. And it, right now, they look like they have the fresher legs and more energy than the home team UNLV Rebels. It was a UNLV squad that leaned on their seniors, Curtis Terry. And Corey Bailey combining for 36 in the 70-63 victory, a hard-fought victory to close out the regular season against Utah. Shot clock down to four. Shaw for three. Rebound, Rujo, and it goes. Boy, a tough break for the Frogs there, not, not getting that offensive rebound. A desperation three. TCU doing a much better job guarding that pick and pop. The first half, we talked about the confusion, whether they were going to switch that or not. Really doing a good job defensively, but not able to finish it off here. And Ortiz kind of missed the block out there. A nice job by Rougeau. Boy, what a game Rougeau has had, James. 17 points now for Rene Rougeau. Eight rebounds. 
three steals. Well, that's his third offensive rebound for a putback. You want to pad your, your scoring average. Uh, young guys or old guys are watching this. Go after every offensive rebound and try to get a putback. Rene Rougeau was three of them tonight. Oh, John R. Ortiz doing it from the outside and looking smooth, taking it to the rack here. First bucket of the night for senior Corey Bailey. Corey Bailey, the oldest member of this UNLV Run and Rebel team. After his high school days, he spent three years back in Florida working in the air condition trade. And that's one thing you don't want to do back in Florida. It's good to have the air condition, not when they're broken down and you're sweating, <laughs> coach. Well, I guarantee you he appreciates that full scholarship and a couple free pair of tennis shoes every once in a while. Neil Doherty wants a timeout, and uh-oh, Horn Frog fans. Brent Hackett limps over to that bench in the meeting with his coach. Let's check in with our coach tonight, leading the show, Blaine Fowler, down on the sideline. Hey, James, I wanted to continue on with the story that you and Joe were talking about with Corey Bailey. What a great story. After three years, you know, coming out, he didn't have the test scores to be able to go to a Division I program, so he went working in the air conditioning business, actually got cited three times for driving with a suspended license and had to spend 45 days in the county jail. And he said, you know what, that was a blessing in disguise because it kind of got me thinking I need to do something with my life. And in 2004, he went to Butler Community College in Kansas and just really blossomed as a basketball star there. And, and Lon Kruger found him there and gave him an opportunity here. And he said when he got here, he realized I'm 27 years old. You know, should I really be here playing D1 basketball? And he had to overcome that. Worked with a sports psychologist, Ed Klein, here. And, and Lon Kruger says that he has just really blossomed. His confidence is up. And, and that's what college basketball is all about. This, this young man has just turned his life around because of the sport of basketball. It's a great story. You're absolutely right, Blaine. And two courses left to take in the summer. And Corey Bailey will be a graduate of UNLV. And he admitted Coach, he was running drugs for some friends, and he fortunately he said, I wasn't caught, or I would have gone to the prison, not just Pinellas County Jail. As the shot clock expires, Kevin Langford drills it for two points. TCU's, I said, just not going away, playing with great energy and great confidence. That's where I like to see Kevin Langford get it down around that block where he can really operate. The snow dagger shot won't go. Guess who? Rujo, another offensive board. That's number four. That same wraparound pass to Kurt, from Curtis Terry back to Darger. There's the follow by Darger. Bucket won't go, but he'll head to the line and shoot. Well, Kevin Langford matching the energy level of Rene Rougeau. He's been all over as of late for the Frogs. Well, how about it? Just about 10 minutes left to play in this one. Quarterfinal number three and a four-point lead for the boys from Cowtown. We're coming at you next. You can get all the highlights live, post-game reaction, and full analysis as we break down all the action from our game on Sonic Post Game Live. Our coverage continues next, right here on the mountain. Boy, the Thomas and Mac is rocking now. Trying to cheer their running Rebels back into this one. And hoping that you and L. V can make another big run, sweet 16 run. What a great one it was before losing to Oregon last year in St. Louis for UNLV. Joe Darger and company, it's a total new look. Losing four starters off of that squad. Let's check in with Lane Fowler again. Joe and James, you know what we were talking about when TC was behind and Neil called that timeout, he was very calm. Well, now they're ahead, <laughs> he was not calm this time. He met the team and he gave them a, a tongue lashing about boxing out on the glass and, and really got after him. I think it was a little more Coach K-like this time, Joe, than it was the last time. Well, Blaine, you gotta be three-quarter psychologist to be a college basketball coach. And I think in both instances, Neil Doherty being calm when they're behind and being a cheerleader and excitable when they're ahead. I think both those were appropriate and probably uh, he's done a great job of coaching, bench coaching in this game. 
Shot clock down to five for Keon Mitchell. Sophomore out of Rochester, New York. Upstate and downtown. What a great shot. I thought he shot that completely out of rhythm, kind of in between steps. I'm not sure Jason Terry even got a hand up when that almost caught him by surprise. Quick feed into Joe Darger. Snow Dagger lays it in for two more. Hey, Rene Rougeau has got great stats tonight, but he's the one who set that cross screen that sprung Joe Darger there uh, on a small, big cross screen that couldn't be switched to help Joe Darger get free for that basket. Offensive board ends up in the hands of Evie. Fresh shot clock for TCU, holding on to a three-point lead under nine minutes to play. TCU's really helped themselves this half game. It's only one turnover after committing 10 in the first half, so only one turnover in the last almost 12 minutes. Here's another steal for Rujo. Up court to Wink Adams. Across the lane. Throws it down. Three-point chance for Wink. Just as I was bragging about lack of turnovers, another great steal for Ren Rene Rujo. Here, what great anticipation he has and a great pass. And this, this is what your star does. Wink Adams making a great and one there. I talked about how strong he is playing through the hit, making that one go in. And again, that's what your star does. He makes star plays in close game. And a three-point play for the only returning starter off that Sweet 16 team. Wink Adams now with 17. Four steals, by the way, on the night for Rene Rujo. We're tied at 68, and here comes Hackett and the Frogs. If they don't score here, Neil Doherty may, may call a timeout to try to take the crowd back out of the crowd and the momentum going towards UNLV right now. Eby across the lane. Parker follows. And a foul call. Too loud in the building to hear the whistle on Rene Rougeau. And that is Rougeau's fourth foul of the night. Are you kidding me? Mountain West Conference tournament action at its best. Under eight minutes to play in this ballgame. And we're back under eight minutes to play in a tie ball game at 68. Now, if you've never seen the Thomas and Mack Center during the regular season, well, this isn't what it looks like. The rafters are bare naked, Coach. They take down to make sure that the home court advantage isn't there all the way for UNLV. They take down Larry Johnson's national championship banner, All-American jersey. There he is, LJ up in the stands. And, of course, the UNLV running Rebels, they have to move out of their home locker room, just like everybody else. Try to get that on-the-road feeling. But you can't hide the fact that just about everybody in this house right now is pulling for the guys in the white uniforms. The UNLV running Rebels, the two-seed. And Alvardo Parker's seven-seed TCU Horn Frogs retake the lead with that free throw. James, both teams shooting 50% or better from the floor. TCU really helping themselves by getting 27 rebounds to UNLV's 18. I talked about cutting the turnovers down in the second half. They, they are really playing outstanding basketball right now. How many times are we going to see this? Wink Adams off the feed of Curtis Terry laying it in and one. He's fouled, will head to the line. An opportunity for another three-point play the old-fashioned way for Wink. James, watch Wink Adams here come set a flare screen here and then slip it there as his man tries to help on the little flare or back screen there. Really good recognition by Wink Adams and who delivers it but the tallest point guard in the league, Curtis Terry. 20 points now for Wink Adams. And as I said, that's what your star does. He makes big plays in important and close games, and that's exactly what Wink Adams 
has done in the last two minutes. First matchup with TCU, he scored 18 of his 25 in the second half. He's got 10 in the first and 10 in the second to match. Langford's had a big second half. He works on Darger. Shot clock under 10. EB left alone from the corner too strong. Another board for Kevin Langford with a fresh shot clock. Nine rebounds now for Langford. 16 points, nine rebounds. Obviously knocking on the door of a double-double. I'd mentioned earlier in the telecast, James, when you pick the ball up against UNLV, they just attack like a pack of piranhas uh, and get on everyone one pass away and let you have no open passing lanes. But Ryan Wall says, who needs a passing lane? I'll just jump up and drill this NBA three-point shot here. From my back, no less. Five of six now, Coach, for Ryan Wall from long range. All 15 of his points coming behind the arc. Retaking the lead, TCU. Wink a dink a do. Way downtown. Wink Adams has 23 on the night. Well, remember when Blaine Fowler said they were making an adjustment on how to play that screen on the ball that time? The guy guarding. The, the guy dribbling went under the screen. Alvaro Parker stayed too long and left uh, left Matt Shaw on the perimeter, and that's something you can't do with Matt Shaw, an outstanding catch-and-shoot guy. Brett Hackett for three. Now the purple contingent liking what they're seeing. 12 times the lead has changed. In this ball game, Ron Kruger wants to talk it over with his crew under six minutes to play. Here's this ball screen. Watch, watch Wall go under, but Parker stay too long with it here and leave the 6'8 Matt Shaw wide open on the perimeter. Matt Shaw, you, we've all heard of the pick and roll. Matt Shaw is a pick and pop guy because he's such a good three-point shooter. He stretches the defense by screening on the ball and then popping to the three-point line. And if you stay too long with the guy dribbling the ball, you leave him open, and that's exactly what happened there. Parker's got to close to him much sooner. UNLV throughout the regular season. Best in the league when it comes to defending the three. TCU, a 34% three-point shooting team. They've doubled that up, 71.4 tonight. And tying a tournament record with 547 remaining in the ball game. Brent Hackett, five of seven. Ryan Wall, five of six. Two seniors that don't want to go out tonight in the quarterfinals. 71% from the three-point line. You know you're supposed to be in the game or with a two-point lead if you're shooting it that well from the three-point line. Wink all alone again. 26 points, Wink Adams. Keon Mitchum just kind of fell asleep at the switch. Forgot Wink Adams was standing over in the corner virtually. Started watching the ball and a great skip pass by Bailey to find Adams over there. And it's a steal that brings them to their feet here on the Thomas and Matt. Shaw to Bailey. And here come the Rebels with a great charge led by that suffocating half court defense that forced a turnover by TCU. Here they come again. A held ball possession arrow points to the guys in purple will stay right here with TCU. James, you've got to know when you screen on the ball or set a screen for the dribbler, UNLV is going to come double that. And when they're playing with energy, boy, they just suffocate you with, with that. TCU guards a couple times seemingly have almost forgot that they double team that and dribble right into that double team causing Several turnovers here. Not so many this second half, but you're almost better off not screening on the ball when you play against UNLV. Uh, 
the drama here. Curtis Terry leading his case, wanting that rock. It'll stay with TCU, 17 to shoot, though. Let's take a peek at it. Did it go off Mitchum's hands? <laughs> Terry sure thought so. <laughs> oh, he's fun to watch. What a good kid. Really enjoyed being around him throughout his career. He will be missed by a lot of people here in Vegas. Five to shoot now for TCU. Ortiz doesn't realize it. Langford does and lets it go. Hits it. Kevin Langford. Oh, my. It, it may be meant to be. That's about the third buzzer beater TCU has thrown in from the three-point line tonight. Kevin Langford, a 21% three-point shooter with his second three-pointer of the night. 16 threes and a record for TCU. Hey, hey, hey. And great defense by Mitchum there. He was inside wing Adams' jersey with him. Once again, a star player makes big plays. Keon Mitchum doing everything he could there. Wink Adams jumps up and sticks it in. Wink Adams now sits at 29 points with 341 remaining. His career high earlier this year against the Wyoming Cowboys of 33. Before Wink came around, H-Town was no town. You may still be skeptic, but UNLV and Wink Adams trying to make sure when the tournament comes around, they get accepted. 82-79, we'll be back. With a three-point lead, Rebel fans throwing up the Rebel chant. You just missed Viva Las Vegas. Boy, when they get rocking Viva Las Vegas, look out. It's as good as it gets in college ball. Here's your sonic drive-in of the game, courtesy of Rene Rougeau. Mr. Action himself has been quiet as of late, though, sitting on the bench with four fouls. But that's your sonic drive-in of the game for the junior. Back out on the floor now with 341 remaining and a three-point lead. Evie hits the front half of a one-and-one. One. Big free throws for Evie, keeping his team in it and keeping the crowd out of it. Only a 62% free throw shooter. But those two are big right there, keeping it a one-point game. Back and forth, three-point barrage. We've set a new tournament record tonight, 26 combined. Three-pointers, 16 at the hands of TCU, 10 to UNLV. Mitchum picks up a foul as he guards Curtis Terry. Well, bad mistake by Mitchum there putting Terry at the free throw line. When you get into a game this tight in the last three minutes and a half like we're at, you just got to be solid. And I think that's the reason Coach Doherty's putting his senior in now. You see Coach Doherty lecturing Mitchum on the sideline there. Of, you know, why'd you put him at the free throw line? We were in great shape there. Just Mitchum's inexperience there getting a little bit too anxious. And again, you've got to be disciplined on defense down the stretch like this. And one of two on that trip for Terry. So the lead sits at two, 83-81, under three and a half to play. Langford backs down on Darger, who's got his right nostril full of gods. Langford over the top rolls in. I like where they got Langford the ball there. I talked about earlier in the game, Langford trying to create off the dribble. That's not his game. What is his game is getting it down around that low block where he can work. EB sends that one sailing over the scorer's table behind us here. 19 to shoot for UNLV. Right. You think this isn't a tough one? Look at Darger's right nostril, Coach. Well, this has been a great game. Physical, hard played, well played. Both teams around 50% shooting. Pop, stop, and drop. Curtis that? Terry, big three. 14 points on the night for the senior. What a tough shot. Not only was it deep, off the full gallop, off a handoff, maybe one of the toughest jump shots. In college basketball, what Curtis Terry just jumped up and made it look easy. Now he's talking to himself as he guards Wall, looking like the predator. Mm. 
nice looking move. Oh. Ortiz, but it bangs out. Big rebound, Corey Bailey. Big defensive possession here. TCU, I keep preaching, just stay solid. Curtis Terry hits a tough three. You got to make him earn it, though. Just stay in front of your guys and no second shots. Everyone get to your block out now. Shot clock goes down to 11 as Lon Kruger jumps off the bench and calls a timeout. 149 remaining. James, watch, watch Darger here looking for a guy to screen. Here comes Terry off a full gallop. Doesn't even take a rhythm dribble. Boy, what a tough shot that was. Give Joe Darger a lot of credit for turning, finding uh, Curtis Terry's guy and springing him for that three. Well, on senior night, Curtis Terry hit two big three-pointers as the shot clock expired. We've seen about 12 of those on both ends in this ball game. 27 three-pointers on the night, just adding to that Mountain West Conference tournament record. And we're just getting started here on the mountain. Coming at you at 9.30 Mountain Time. What everybody pointed out is being the best matchup of the tournament. The Lobos and the running youth, Steve Alford and Jim Boylan, two first-year coaches, will go head-to-head -head in one heck of a class. They have gone down to the wire each time they've met the Lobos, taking both of those contests, though, in the regular season. James, I don't think it's possible to have a much better, more competitive game than what we've had here tonight. 11 seconds left on the shot clock here. Look for UNLV to come out and set a ball screen for either Terry or Wink Adams. TCU has had trouble defending that ball screen virtually all night. TCU needs to be very solid defensively here and get to their block out and no second shot. They've either got to switch the ball screen or they've got to all be on the same page as to what they're doing. Rochelle Trapp over to Terry and Hackett banging bodies with Curtis Terry and it's Hackett that goes down to the floor as he picks up a foul. That's his second on the night. Well, that's twice TCU uh, has put UNLV on the free throw line. Hackett, the senior, and he did come out and make contact there. That was the right call about a minute ago. Uh, not Jason Evie, but Keon Mitchum reaching in and, and sending him to the free throw line. Boy, a tough, tough break. TCU gets a break here on a missed free throw. They don't need a three here, even though they're down three. They just need to get a good shot. Plenty of time. Ryan Wall has shot nothing but threes tonight. He's hit five of them. Shot clock under 10. Hackett has hit five as, as well. Whoa, a big two this time off the hands of Brett Hackett. Great pull up by Brett Hackett. Uh, probably the weakest part of his offensive game. He usually shoots it deep or goes all the way to the basket. Usually doesn't go to that pull up. Big strong body and showing uh, the level of experience he has, 122 games he's played for TCU. Tough shot. A big trip for UNLV, and Wink Adams turns it over. Chance to retake the lead with under 45, or right at 45, rather, to play for Neil Doherty's TCU Horn Frogs. Wink just lost the handle on that. TCU comes up with it. Now Neil Doherty drawing up a play, but the first business of hand. Here's Wink Adams coming off this ball screen. You see Hackett, much better job of playing that ball screen by TCU there. Ortiz laying off or gapping the screener and, and letting, letting Hackett go under it, but Wink Adams just lost the handle. What TCU has to be concerned with here is getting the ball in bounds. Forget first about running a play, get it in bounds and be safe with it. UNLV will be in an all out denial. Remember, they have five defenders on the floor against four offensive players. So uh, set your priorities if you're Neil Doherty. This is how we're going to get it in, and then this is what we're going to run. 
Not sure at the other end right now. Long Kruger saying, okay, if they make it, this is what we're going to run. If they miss it, this is what we're going to run. If they miss, we've got plenty of time to come down and run the shot clock down and squeeze this game. If they make it, we probably want to come down and they'll probably call a timeout. Both coaches calling multiple plays defensively and offensively in this last timeout. And it's just a second ago you saw a shot of TCU athletic director Danny Morrison on his feet. Mike Hamrick, UNLV athletic director, on his feet as well, I'm sure, somewhere in the Thomas and Mack Center. There's Mr. Morrison. Outstanding gentleman. Always fun to see him out on the road. Here we go. Hack it to inbound. The rebound here will be important. No second shot for TCU if you're UNLV. If you're TCU, you sell out to the offensive glass. Are you kidding me? Hackett hits a huge three. Retaking the lead to Frost. Brett Hackett with that same move the first half where he gives you a foot fake, made Joe Darger drop his hands, which allowed Hackett to rhythm right into his shot. A big shot by the senior. Back down at the other end. Clock ticks down to just over 13 seconds. Lon Kruger wants to talk it over with his guys trailing by Watch two. This. How about the last bucket? Watch his foot fake. May Darger drop his hands here as he does. Hackett, multiple fakes there, and then rhythms right into his shot. Now, the shoe is on the other foot. UNLV's got to make sure they get the ball in bounds first and then run a play. They want to get a shot with about five seconds left to make sure they can get in there and try to get a second shot for TCU once again. And I've said it, just be solid and rebound. Well, it isn't quite the 70 plus that he scored like Lane told us in high school. But for Brent Hackett, the senior, 26 will have to do. Six of eight behind the hump. A career high. What a special night for the senior from Southwest High School right there in Fort Worth. 13.3 seconds remain, however. And the Rebels trailing by two with the Rock. Ball knocked up and out of bounds off the hands of Evie. Just over seven remain. Seven seconds to play, TCU. Nice timeout by Neil Doherty to set his defense here. Well, they're telling us in the truck we have to hand out a player of the game honor, Coach. We're going to give it to Wink Adams, but take your pick. Anybody on the floor tonight, that's your collegiate licensing company player of the game, Wink Adams, the junior from Houston. What a great game. I don't think TCU will come out and zone this end out of bounds, but what a curveball it would be to UNLV. I've seen TCU zone a few out of bounds plays early in the year. I don't know if Neil Doherty feels comfortable enough doing that right now, but they've got to be very careful. They've got to put a guy on the ball on a 45 degree angle toward the basket, not let the ball be inbounded toward the basket. They've got to switch every like size. If too big screen, they've got to switch it. If too small screen, they've got to switch that and then they've got to sell out to the defensive glass and not allowed uh, Vegas UNLV to get a second shot. That's exactly what they've done. They've come out in the zone here. Now they've got to get to the block out. Wake up! Oh, the game is tied, and Wake Adams will head to the line with 3.4 remaining to try to give the Rebels the lead. Oh, coach! Huh? Oh my gosh! What a tough shot. Look at TCU, three guys on him, making sure they don't foul him. And he puts it in, four guys around him. And they send Wink Adams to the free throw line, who is an 85% free throw shooter for the year with a chance for a win.
And the best free throw shooter in the conference connects. There is a stoppage. Shot was launched from half court. The clock never started. A one point lead for UNLV off the three point play by Wink Adams and the horn blew for a sub. Wink now with 29 points, none bigger than that free throw. Langford to inbound. TCU can get about a dribble per second. They will need to catch it deep, put it on the floor. They can get three dribbles before they, one, two, three. He's got to go to his shot. Hackett lets it go. Shot would have counted, but it doesn't drop. Dodging the bullet, the hometown team, the number two seed, Wink Adams, Rene Rougeau, and the UNLV running Rebels move on. 89 to 88 here in the Thomas and Mack. What a game, what a valiant effort by these TCU for Horn Frogs. And what a man-sized shot by Wink Adams. He did it not twice, not three, but four times. Made huge shots to push UNLV either team either even or ahead. And that's the reason he's one of the top five players in the league. So now running Rebel fans and running Rebel players will have to sit and wait for our fourth quarter final. Coming at you next, a great one here at the Thomas and Mack in quarterfinal number three. It may get even better. Utah taking on New Mexico next. For Blaine Fowler, Joe Cravens, and our entire Mountain crew, I'm James Bates. Post game live coming at you next from Las Vegas. Thanks for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast because we sure enjoyed bringing it to you.